I'm Dan Galpin with the latest from Now and Android, your ongoing guide to what's new and notable in the world of Android development. This episode features Android Canaries, Agentic AI in Studio, 16 KB page size requirements, play updates including policy changes, new capabilities around one-time purchases, Play Game Services V2, and Google Play Games on PC, IO recaps on AI and dev productivity, next-gen Samsung devices, Compose tips, and more. Android is evolving its early access programs by introducing the Canary release channel, replacing the old developer preview model while providing earlier and more consistent access to in-development features throughout the year. The Canary channel delivers continuous over-the-air updates for supported Pixel devices. You can integrate these builds into your CI systems to catch potential compatibility issues early, and download Canary SDKs directly through the SDK Manager in Android Studio. Canary builds are bleeding edge and run in parallel with the existing beta program. Try out your apps on Canary to explore and help guide where Android is heading, but focus your app testing resources on the beta channel to make sure you're ready for the next platform launch. You can get started by flashing your Pixel device using the Android Flash tool, or by configuring the Android emulator with a Canary image. Speaking of Canaries, the latest Android Studio Narwhal feature drop Canary includes Agent Mode, a new experimental feature that allows Gemini to handle complex multi-step development tasks on its own. Just describe your goal in plain English, and the agent will create and execute a plan that can span multiple project files, using IDE tools to make changes, run builds, and perform searches. You're always in control, with the ability to review, accept, or reject its proposed changes. For even more power, you can add your own Gemini API key to expand the context window to a massive 1 million tokens with Gemini 2.5 Pro. The Bot to the Future Android Developers Backstage podcast is a conversation between Tor, Siva, and Sanjay from the Android Studio team, covering the latest updates to Gemini in Studio and more. Android is transitioning to 16 KB memory page sizes. This change can lead to a 5 to 10% overall performance improvement, including faster app launches and reduced battery consumption. Starting November 1st, 2025, all new and updated apps on Google Play targeting Android 15 or higher must support 16 KB page sizes. The good news is that apps built with only Kotlin or Java are already compatible. Although you want to check any libraries or SDKs you use, since many of them make use of C or C++. For those with C or C++ code, the latest tools like Android Gradle Plugin 8.5.1 and NDK Art 28 enable 16 KB alignment by default. Android Studio's APK Analyzer will help you identify any non-compliant native libraries. A single updated binary will run seamlessly on both older 4.KB and newer 16KB devices, and you can test your app today using the new 16KB emulator. For more background on 16KB page sizes and how to prepare your app, Stephen Moreland has put together informative long and short format videos. There were a bunch of updates from Google Play. First. Play recapped their top announcements from Google I.O., including subscriptions with add-ons, improved visibility and value for subscriptions in Play, and the ability to customize subscription grace periods and account hold periods. Also, Play's introducing new capabilities for one-time digital product purchases, separating what the product is from how you sell it. For each one-time product, you can now configure multiple purchase options and offers. These capabilities are available once you upgrade to the Play Billing Library 8.0. Play Game Services V2 introduces new experiences to give you deeper player insights and greater Play Store visibility, including transforming how achievements work, support for the Play Grouping API to launch promotional content to custom audiences in Play, and a future with generative AI avatars. We published our GDC talk on multi-platform game distribution from a single Android app bundle with the latest from Google Play Games on PC, including keyboard to touch translation and optional native mouse support. Play covered how CSUN Games is bringing Mecha Break to PCs through Google Play Games. The leaders hashtag WeArePlay profiled the team behind Aminotes and their global hit Magic Tiles 3. The new blockchain-based Content Policy Help Center details country-specific requirements and potential location-specific forms, as well as how to declare your crypto exchange or software wallet in the Financial Features Declaration. There are policy updates for personal loan apps targeting Pakistan. The latest episode of Policy Bytes covered the evolution of body sensor permissions, AI-generated content best practices, content ratings and ads, and upcoming policy deadlines. Finally, Play announced the fourth year of the Indie Games Fund in Latin America. We finished out our I.O. recaps for the season, covering our top dev productivity and in-app AI updates. 
Over in Dev Productivity, in addition to Agentic AI in Android Studio, we covered the big Compose-related updates, including Navigation 3, Material 3 Expressive, Camera X and Media 3 integration, as well as the Kotlin multi-platform shared module template. Over in AI, we've got a new set of MLKit Gen AI APIs powered by Gemini Nano. The Google AI Edge platform, along with Play for on-device API for building and deploying both pre-trained and custom models, and using Firebase AI logic to leverage Gemini and imagine cloud-based models. Samsung announced the Galaxy Z Fold 7 and Flip 7, launching on Android 16, with enhancements to desktop windowing and DeX, along with the Galaxy Watch 8, the first device to feature Wear OS 6. Speaking of Wear OS, we announced that watch face development is changing to exclusively support the watch face format. As of January 27, 2025, new watch faces in play must be in the watch face format. And in January 2026, legacy watch faces will no longer be installable from the Play Store. We added a bunch of videos. Ash covered rich experiences with live updates and widgets. Widgets now offer canonical layouts and generated previews, while live updates use the new progress style template to streamline progress indicators for time-sensitive user-initiated journeys, such as delivery or ride sharing, as well as a prominent status chip for quick user access. Zoe detailed how to build a runtime-enabled isolated SDK in a secure sandbox, including how to structure your project, configure Gradle, and declare your API. Paris walked through debugging Compose UIs with the embedded layout inspector in Android Studio, as well as Compose previews, including interactive mode, animation preview, and UI check mode. Over in Android X, Room 2.8 Alpha 1 now allows you to get a support SQLite database wrapper to ease incremental migration to Room. Both Room 2.8 and Paging 3.4 Alpha 1 add KMP targets for watch and tvOS. WebKit gets HTTP header control, improved cookie handling, and an experimental API to warm up the web view renderer process. Finally, in Android Developers Backstage, Tor and Chet joined Graham and Payush from the Android Consumer Experience team and Alon from the Android Studio team to discuss Android Backup and Restore. And that's all. With Android Canaries, Agentic AI, 16 KB pages, play updates, recaps on AI and dev productivity, compose tips, new Samsung devices, and more. Remember to like, subscribe, share, stay safe. And come back here soon for your next updates from the Android developer universe.